Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is expected to launch his presidential campaign today. He shall be launching the campaign in a live uh, with Tesla CEO Elon Musk. The right-wing leader has gathered quite a sizable number of donors from Miami especially. His plan is to begin his campaign from his downtown, uh, from his hometown in fact, uh, which is uh, Dundon, which shall be followed by early voting states next week. Now, DeSantis has maintained a consistent second position to Donald Trump in the much-coveted 2024 race for the next president of the United States. The former president is already facing several lawsuits, including those of January 6 riots, money laundering and even sexual harassment. However, there are some political analysts who have called DeSantis just another version of Donald Trump, just without the baggage. Meanwhile, Casey DeSantis, the Florida governor's wife, has posted a video on social media which features her husband hinting at his campaign launch. Take a look. It's been expected for months and prepared for weeks, no doubt. But finally, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is due to announce his candidature for leading the Republican Party in the presidential elections next year. And he is due to make that announcement through the course of a conversation with Tesla boss Elon Musk over Twitter spaces. And that is expected at 6 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. on Wednesday. Rather a useful platform, Musk has 140 million followers on Twitter, a rather public place uh, to announce that candidature at a time when DeSantis will need all the exposure that he can get. This is the grand start for his campaign, but a lot is going to follow. This will be followed very soon now, within just about a week or 10 days, with the start of a national campaign and a national tour. It will be an extensive tour and, as records would suggest, a very busy tour where DeSantis will be going around the country and hope to win countrywide the popularity that he no doubt has won and won through very active campaigning earlier in Florida. This gives a new twist now to the Republican campaign. He will take on Donald Trump, who is miles ahead in the opinion polls. He clearly is the front runner, but that can very easily change. Without doubt, Trump is under very, very heavy clouds. He's mired in a number of cases in New York principally, and these are cases that have involved sleaze, sexual sleaze, and allegations of fraud, and the cases are not done yet. He is due to make appearances in court yet again, and one certainly expected in December when the campaigning will be at peak. Trump has been defended by a number of Republicans over these allegations, but if the allegations continue to swirl or even to stick partially, that is going to do him no good. And of course, then there is no question, DeSantis is just 44 and America seems to be hungering for a leader who is young, not Biden, not Trump. That is a matter that the party voters will take a call on and it will not necessarily finally be between DeSantis and uh, Trump. Uh, we know Nikki Haley is in the running, uh, not uh, going very far as yet, and yet others are due to declare their candidature. So this is now um, open ground. The uh, live um, event, uh, the live period for this whole nomination process has now begun. It is not a case of Trump alone leading the way. This is also going to throw into question who the Republicans think will be the best bet against the Democrats. Biden himself is not proving to be immensely popular. He is a steady sort of a person. He's seen to have a steady hand, but that itself is being called to question, into question again and again. And there will be some doubts about his effectiveness as the Democrat candidate and therefore a young energetic contender from the Republicans would appear promising to a number of Republican voters. Ideologically, there's not a great deal to choose between Trump and DeSantis. In fact, Nikki Haley calls DeSantis a mini Trump and a mimic of Trump. Certainly DeSantis is anti-abortion. He's a champion of gun laws and there's a new law coming into force in Florida from July that will give people the right to carry concealed weapons without a license in line with some other states. So his position uh, on so many other um, issues is quite similar to that of Trump. Uh, he is anti-vaccination. And this, of course, uh, is, is a contended area 
he has uh, had different things to say about that at different times, no doubt in line with the political compulsions or expediency that is uh, perceived by him and his advisors. This now will bring into question his record now as governor of Florida. His followers claim that he has done rather well. They will point to his achievements and of course Trump will point to his shortcomings. The Trump team has spent $13 million already just on countering DeSantis. It's self-acknowledgement that DeSantis is seen as a credible threat. But the field is now open, game on, and it's going to be a political game that will decide who leads the Republicans and possibly the United States. We've accomplished more than anybody thought possible four years ago, but we've got so much more to do. Well, he's going to make the argument that he is uh, as conservative as Donald Trump, uh, but that he has no baggage, that he is somebody who's been a successful governor, been reelected with a wide margin in a very competitive electoral state, and that he has moved the conservative social agenda forward in Florida, and that he'll do the same thing nationwide. As the 46th governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis and First Lady Casey DeSantis. And that I will well and faithfully perform the duties of governor. The duties of governor. On Ron DeSantis' core appeal is that he's not Donald Trump. And that appeals to 65% of the Republican Party. 35% will vote for Trump no matter what, but the rest of the party is open and up for grabs. So Ron DeSantis assumes that's his base, but to win the general election, this is the really big question mark. He's got to not only win over Republican voters, he's got to win over people who will say, you will do better than Donald Trump. And Donald Trump likes to cite the fact that he's gotten more votes than any Republican candidate in the history of American politics as we've been keeping records. So how does he make the argument that he's going to win as many votes as Donald Trump? Effectuated, there have been close to 100,000 structures in the most hard-hit areas that have been searched. The pay to being done this month. And so far, Ron DeSantis hasn't had enough coverage and been able to be in those in people's, you know, uh, living rooms, so to speak, on television. So we don't know if he has the charisma and the force and the camera attractiveness to really make an impression on voters. And we're about to find out. With me as governor, we will not raise taxes and we will never have an income tax. He needs to sort of say, here is a flavor you haven't tried, but I'm going to be better and more satisfying in the long run than Donald Trump, and I can actually win the White House. So starting by introducing himself and his family as sort of a viable candidate, I think is a smart strategy. And then in the fall, he'll have an opportunity to run ads head to head against Donald Trump and bring up um, these uh, lawsuits, these indictments, uh, and January 6th, if, if necessary, during the debates against Donald Trump. If you have folks that are inclined to think Florida is a good place, our message to them is we are not a sanctuary state. There you go. They're trying to do sex change operations on minors, giving them things like puberty blockers and doing things that are irreversible. Uh, to them. The record that Ron DeSantis has in Florida, very socially conservative record, was explicitly designed to appeal to the most conservative base and evangelicals. Huge part of the Republican Party now are evangelical voters, including Latinx, Latino and Latina evangelical voters. This is where he sort of, you know, rested, right? Said, this is, I'm, I'm your person. I'm a sincere conservative and I won't betray that once I win. And the other interesting thing in a general election is Donald Trump has alienated a lot of people, but Donald Trump did not go after gay and lesbian groups and transgender folks the way that Ron DeSantis has. He just left it alone. He just didn't do it as president. And so I can see, ironically, where Donald Trump might be able to squeeze more votes in the general election from some groups uh, that don't feel that he will be a threat to their way of life. Uh, DeSantis has touched some hot button cultural issues, but it looks to me like you need to touch some of the cultural issues in order to be able to win over the Republican electorate these days. The cultural issues, uh, the concerns about wokeism and critical race theory and corporate wokeism, uh, I think are issues that really inflate the base and uh, get the base excited.
Uh, and in these days, it's a little hard to figure out what are the key issues uniting Republicans. And concern about some of the excesses of the left seems to be one of those unifying characteristics, one of those unifying theme issues. You know, we fight the woke in the legislature. We fight the woke in the schools. We fight the woke in the corporations. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. DeSantis has both legislative and executive experience. He's also served in the military, which is an increasingly rare trait among our presidents these days, and I think a welcome one. So I think he has plenty of experience, certainly comparable to uh, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, all these people uh, had, been, had been governors beforehand. And I think having that legislative experience is, is, a, is an additional benefit. Yeah, I don't think he's going to focus on Disney. I think he's going to focus on getting stuff done um, as an executive who has a record of getting things done. Uh, he's going to talk about the many problems in Washington. And he can say other than his relatively brief stint in Congress, he was not responsible for them. But he's going to try and fix them and make sure that we as a country come out better after four years of his administration than we are after four years of Trump or four years uh, of Biden. He's uh, got a big war chest already. I think as he introduces himself and his family to Republican voters, I do think his poll numbers will rise. Um, and if he's got good campaign advisors and he listens to them and he stays with it and he proves that he will fight for the nomination and he will go toe to toe with Trump, I do see him peeling off some of the Trump base and being more appealing to Republicans who just really want a champion in the, in the form of Donald Trump without the baggage of Donald Trump.